Hey, Ryan, I've got a dad joke for you. Oh, no. Just just tell it to me. Don't even waste the time. <laughs> what do vegan zombies eat? What? Greens. I'm, Are you impressed? I'm, so sad. I'm, you I'm impressed? impressed, but I'm so sorry that our audience had to go through that. How dare you? Uh, it's always our best these. foot forward on Infinity Rewatch. Welcome aboard. And this is the Infinity Rewatch recap of What If Episode 5. And I'm Andrew Fantasia. Hello. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Ryan J. Whitehead here. And ugh, zombies. <laughs> Dial uh, Z you, for zombies. Dial Z. Oh, yeah, that was the Simpsons one. That's right. Um, yeah. As you guys can probably tell from our voices, Ryan and I are neither of us are a big fan of zombie things. Um, Ryan, have you ever seen a zombie thing that you were on board with? Yeah, actually, once, once, and I'll get into that. Um, so now, he, but I can't get into it without a little prefacing here first. Mm-hmm. And let me preface the whole zombie thing. First of all, at first I liked zombies. I I liked them. I thought they had they had an interesting thing to contribute until Hollywood just bled them dry, literally. Um, I think that I think at this point, zombie movies or anything zombie related, it's just like, oh, there's a weird disease. Must be zombies. People are coming back from the dead. Must be zombies. And it, I'm just <laughs> like, you know, and it, it's like. I can't even begin to tell you like, Oh, there's an evil spell and they come back as zombies. Like why, why it feels like such a cop out in writing. Like, why would you just, why would you not just put a little extra effort and like do something other than zombies? Like for the love of God. Um, and you know, resident evil did a cool idea. You know, it was a weird virus. And in the end, these people were just decaying and dying and, you know, and they're zombie like, but it's just like walking dead. For example, it's something weird in the air. There must be zombies. Like I'm just so sick of it. I am honestly just so absolutely sick of it. And I read, I, I read a little bit of the comic on Marvel zombies a long time ago. And I was just so tired of it because it was on like the hype train of zombies because mm-hmm. zombies in the 2000s, for some reason, just exploded and became like the best thing ever. And I, yeah, I just, I was like, it's like, it's Marvel characters, but they're zombies. And it's like, oh, no. And there are, there is one example that I actually really did like it. And, and they never even mentioned the word zombie once. And it was brilliant. It was so good. And so... The only times of like zombies is one when Simpsons did the zombie episode. It was absolutely hilarious. And I had a really good laugh with that one. And then there's this movie called Doomsday. And Doomsday is about, uh, it takes place in the United Kingdoms. And, um, and so what happens is, is there's a weird disease outbreak um in scotland and it just starts breaking out across the united kingdoms Uh and what happens is is people are like this it's like essentially a flesh-eating virus um so they kind of appear zombie like but they're not zombies they never even mention the word once they're just these infected people and what ends up happening is is the um, is the UK ends up um, England ends up building a massive wall around Scotland to kind of protect themselves from getting you know infected, and eventually the wall breaks down and the virus starts spreading in England and and a guy makes it a, an infected guy makes it into like their base of operations. Because, I don't know, he's somewhat conscious. And um, he gets all the way up to the head office and he ends up infecting the prime minister and it's the whole thing. And um, yeah, in the end, it's it's really good. Uh, it has this amazing actress who names whose name escapes me at the moment. But 
the cool part of the story is in ground zero where the the infection started there are people that are alive and like they survived this like infection and so they need to go find a cure and they they go in and it's like a punk rock society it's all like <laughs> these dudes with like massive mohawks and they're just like street punks and they try to create their own empire and then there's the scientist who goes mad and he decided to start all over again uh society in like a medieval times kind of era so this this sci-fi science the, yeah the sci-fi kind of zombie-ish movie turns into a medieval times fantasy movie all into this one massive genre and it was the it was the first time i seen a movie where they use zombies but they don't actually say they're zombies and it was brilliant i had a i had a fantastic time Wow, did this come out around the time that we met? Because I feel like I remember you talking about this in college. I think so. I actually, yes, I think so. Because I had it on DVD. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to look it up now just to double check. But it it was a great movie. But my Uh point is, like, it doesn't have to be zombies, people. It could be demons. There are plenty of other, you know, dark fantasy tropes you can use as opposed to freaking zombies. And like the whole bite thing and turn into a zombie, I don't care. I don't care anymore. <sighs> I am a hundred percent on the same page as you, my friend. I just I do not see the appeal. I think they also have been bled dry. Like just they are they're just a gray lump of nothing now. When I hear the word yeah. zombie, I just think of a gray lump of nothing, of zero, of emptiness, because that's what everything has given me. Uh, the only things I've enjoyed are, you know, that, that Simpsons episode is, is probably one. I like that. I like Shaun of the Dead with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. I think the only serious zombie thing that I've ever enjoyed was probably the original George A. Romero, Dawn of the Dead, the seventies one, not the one that Zack Snyder made because the one that Zack Snyder made was just too, like the, the first one was all about like the humans and, and, and survival. And it, you know, it had that cool thing that I've always loved of the idea of having a shopping mall all to yourself, which is just so warm and cozy of a thought. I love that idea. And, you know, it, it played with the the characters on the film and, and them trying to survive. And then the Zack Snyder one, on the other hand, was just like, yeah, rock and roll, let's kill zombies, <laughs> rock music, electric guitar. And that, it's like, the first one I feel like it was made for adults. The second one I feel like was made for 14-year-old boys with like anthrax posters on their wall. So <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I think that's the only uh, like legit zombie film that I can, or zombie anything that I can look at and say, Yes, I think that's really good. Like, I, I mm-hmm. own it. I bought the Blu-ray. Like, other than that, they are just not for me, not for this guy. And I don't like zombie video games. I've never played a Resident Evil or seen a Resident Evil movie. They're just completely not for me at all. Uh, so this What If episode, I didn't really expect much going in. As soon as I saw the title, I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. it's the zombie one. And I was just along for the ride. But the ride was pleasant. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, Isabel and I went in with the attitude of like, okay, like just like, okay. You know what I mean? Like this is mm-hmm. ex- like, we could go in with like Doctor Strange, which was in comparison, really exciting. Like it was really yes. cool. Um, but yeah, it just kind of makes me like, it's just like, eh, it's okay. Like it's entertaining, but it's zombies. Like just so sick of zombies and it's and really and to be fair um for marvel fans out there the zombies comic was huge it was massive people Mm. loved it people were all over it and i again it's just zombies are my thing like even vampires have been just like extorted to a point where it's like oh so sick of vampires like but like the cool thing is is again there are better ways to do it. There are better ways you can do these things. And I think the what I will say for the Marvel fans who love the zombies thing, I think they got their due. 
because they they got the MCU equivalent of the zombies thing that they got, and I prefer it this way. I'd rather a thirty minute zombie experience as opposed to an entire MCU film about zombies and this whole zombie zombie verse, as they call it. Um, but so I'm I'm glad it happened. I'm glad it happened on the what if platform. Um, overall, I'm right now. I mean, right now, what if is good. But it's not, it's still pacing wise for me, it's not the best Marvel experience I've had thus far. So if you were to sum up what you just said using your favorite DC film, you would say, what if it's good, but it could be better? It, it can't, yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah. I hate that movie. God, I hate that movie. <laughs> uh, that movie, the trailer was everything for me. I, I, you know, put, mm-hmm. put a good retro song. I, knew, I, know, I know you're not a fan of the whole retro song thing. <laughs> Oh no! I so I love that trailer. I oh, okay. I am. I think that trailer is no. Fan. I mean, I mean, like the 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 trope of like you know, put a classic song over a, a trailer and then call it a trailer kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, I think but, I think it's been done for the most part really well in trailers. Okay, good. So you're on the you're on the pay, you're on the good side then. You're because mm-hmm. like I think if you if you have the right song that conveys the feeling of what the movie's going to be like, then that's it's good, right? Mm-hmm. Um. And I love that trailer, but the movie was just not anything like I was experiencing. Uh, It was just like, I just, uh, don't get me started. Anyway. Guys, it's Ryan's favorite. Buy him the Blu-ray, buy him the 4K, buy him a giant poster so that he can put it on the wall. It's funny because Warner Brothers, when they're at, I've I've been at a couple trade shows where Warner Brothers uh, usually comes and hangs out and does stuff. Um, They always hand out a little loot bag. And in the loot bag, they actually put the most recent Blu-ray in. Like, Oh, cool. Yeah, so one year they actually had Wonder Woman, the first one, on Blu-ray, and they gave it to you for free. I want to go to a trade show and get a free Blu-ray. Yeah. And I mean, it's probably the good, like the American Blu-ray, so there's no French plastered all over the box, too. Well, I don't get invited to more local ones. I mean, besides besides COVID, I mean, I, even yeah. even on the latter end of my, or sorry, on the, uh, on the end of before COVID happened, uh, I wasn't going to a lot of local events. I was going to a lot of international ones. But yeah, the local. Whenever there was a local event, um, yeah, when it, whenever Warner Brothers came, they always they always never uh, never disappointed. They always came with some goodies. Um, but uh, my point is going back to the whole the whole thing here. Um, oh, we were talking about trailers, and now I'm totally forgetting why I brought this up. Uh, just just because you said it could be the show could be the show's good. Oh it yeah, could be it could be better. I, I think. Why it can be better is because you can introduce characters and totally alter them in the movies. You know what I mean? Like we were talking about this in the past episode um, where we're like, you know, what would you like to see? And we talked about Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider because this is your opportunity to do a passing of the torch episode and still give fans a version of the hero they want and let them know that they may that they're going to get either a better version or a different uh, a different generation of that character. Like Ghost Rider has had four different generations of Ghost, maybe more, but four generations of Ghost Riders. Um, one of them being like this uh, female character who is rumored uh, rumored to be going to be arriving in the MCU. Um, uh, but it's I think it's I think it's your opportunity to really kind of take a lot of liberties in giving us characters that we want to see and, and introducing them in a what if platform and then have them reappear. And you kind of get this double experience of like, Oh my God, like there's the character. Um, But the problem is with the show is because it's like a, what if moment? I feel like, I feel like it's like, okay, it happened, but it's not going to relate to anything. Like, I really don't feel like this is going to relate to anything monumental with marvel like even with um after now post shang chi and all i've been watching all the reviews now all the easter egg stuff just to kind of see if i was even remotely close which we were there's a couple things we were very very on the same page with other people on um uh but um yeah it's it's one of those things where uh you know i just feel like because Song Chi, like the further we go, the further we go with the MCU, that movie will unveil a lot of things. You know what I mean? Like we got hints and teases of things that are going to expand big time much later on. Where what if I feel like, like it's just a one-off, 
And as much as I love that, the MCU train has left the station and it's, it's, it's constantly expanding. So anything that doesn't relate directly to the MCU at this point is going to feel weird and off putting, you know what I mean? Like you're gonna, you're gonna be like, that's cool, but that's it. Like, that's it that actually that line really sums it up it's like that's cool but that's it yeah that's a great line actually uh Mm -hmm. i feel like yeah this was just an episode that was just completely for funsies totally superfluous to everything uh just to to throw out there uh to the people because we are you and i are the minority in that you know everybody seems to just eat up every zombie thing that ever gets made um yeah you know all the power to them I'm, you know, keeping, keep loving what you love, everybody. Uh, so I, I guess this was just for those people and just like, look, we, we acknowledge that Marvel zombies was a thing and now it's there. Uh, yeah. I was personally, I was content with that little Easter egg we got in, um, Spider-Man far from home when Mysterio makes Spider-Man see the, the zombie Iron Man. Yes. Whatever. I was like, okay. Yeah. That that, was a- that's, that was perfect nod. Perfect yeah. nod to the zombies. Everyone loved that. Even I loved it. So I was like, that's a wicked nod. And that's all you need to do. You don't need to do more than that. Sorry. Kidding. Yeah. That's all I needed to see. And now I am, you know, I, I understand that this show isn't going to be 100% lore. You know, mm-hmm. it's not going to be 100% like adding new stuff to can. And I get that. That's the nature of it. So I was expecting most of the series to be little superfluous things like this. And this just happens to be one that is not only, you know, completely irrelevant to the grand scheme of things, but also about subject matter that I'm just like, so done with, you know? So (laughs) I, I, I just tried to enjoy it for what it was. And for me, the enjoyment just came out of, you know, primarily getting to hear Chadwick Boseman again and getting to hear my man crush Paul Rudd uh, and and just like, you know, seeing some characters again, that was pretty much it. It was just the fun of this little grab bag of Marvel heroes Mm -hmm. uh, stuck in this situation together. Uh, And that was, you know, I got that enjoyment out of it. So I, you know, if I'm ever rewatching this show in the future, I'm not going to skip this episode. I thought it was fun, but it, it's just this one little thing that kind of comes and goes. And I get that. I, I guess mm-hmm. they can't all be Dr. Strange Supreme kind of episodes. True. And, and here's the other thing I've been trying to define of like what, what's off putting with the show for me. And, and don't get me wrong, everyone, everyone listening who's subscribing and commenting and doing all those wonderful things. Don't get me wrong. I feel like this needs to exist. I feel like what if needed to happen? And, I, and I'm glad it did. I don't get me wrong. I'm really happy that it did. Um, but I, th- the way to define it is it's, it feels like it's a run-on content that isn't quite delivering or it kind of feels repetitive. It's like this. It, and the best way to describe it as an example is the joke of, in Pirates of the Caribbean about why the rum is gone. <laughs> and it's that constant repeat joke that's elaborated on every single movie but it all sources from one that one joke that was so well timed and delivered in the movie but every single time it's like why is the rum gone why is the rum gone oh this is why the rum's why is the rum always gone i don't care it's not funny anymore like it's just been played it's just been played so constantly and it's it's so bad and it's and like again like you know funny the first time funny funny ish the second time third time they find a creative new way to like introduce the rum is gone and in these what if things it kind of feels like the same thing they find something funny in you know the one moment in the movies and then they'll play it up a little bigger and slightly different in the show and it's like okay I need more than that. <laughs> like the, mm-hmm. you know, first time around, you know, we had, uh, we had Captain Carter. That was funny and it was different and it expanded a little bit on the whole MCU, but it's, it's the same formula for every single episode. And I'm, I'm, I'm at the point now where it's like, okay, I get it, but I want, I want something, you know, I want, 
I don't know. I, I want the watcher to show me Galactus or something. Like something. <laughs> like give me something. Well, I mean, obviously you want something substantial and it, it feels like by its very nature, what if is meant to be insubstantial. Uh, yeah. So it's almost like you're trying to draw blood from a stone here and, and there's oh, there's, only, there's only so much to analogy. show. Thank you. There's only so much the show I think is going to give us. Uh, if they introduce Galactus cool i don't think they will because i think you know there's something to be said about the idea of seeing him in live action for the first time Mm -hmm. uh let me repeat that for tim's story who i know is listening there's something to be said tim about seeing galactus in live action for the first time tim um anyways where was i uh where is the story in that (laughs) the i think what the way this show would would resonate the best for me and this is just speaking from my palette what i would like is to me the question what if dot 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 question mark to me the philosophical ramifications of a question like what if mm. is um sad to me it's a sad question uh, are you, are you fam- I know you weren't when like back when we were in school, but right now, Ryan, are you familiar with Harry Potter at all? Like, have you watched the movies? Uh, fun fact. Yes, I am familiar. I have watched them all. You've watched them all. Them. I've watched them. Oh, no, sorry. I'm, I'm, I haven't seen part two of the Deathly Hollows, So I'm, I'm actually have not seen them all. I'm okay. missing the last one. Fun fact though. Um, uh, my ex-girlfriend, uh, or well, my girlfriend at the time, um, ex-girlfriend obviously uh so i got my wisdom teeth out and i was super like tanked on like the the, the t3s or whatever they gave you yeah and she just thought it was the most brilliant time to just marathon the entire harry potter series so yes i have seen pretty much all of them while you were drugged up on dentist thing while i was drugged up on t3s so if, if I make a reference to something from the films, you'll you'll be able to, to share this with you. Potentially, potentially I may okay. be able to get the joke. Because <laughs> here's the thing, and this, this brings me to my point about what if. Do you know what I think is, you know, the Harry Potter universe introduces a lot of cool magic and everything, but there's also a lot of scary stuff in the world of Harry Potter. There's mm-hmm. a lot of horror elements to the magic. And do you know what I find to be the scariest thing in all of Harry Potter. What? Is in the first movie, the mirror that shows you what you want most in the world. And how Dumbledore says, you know, people have wasted away in front of this mirror. Uh, Because Harry looks in the mirror and he sees his parents with him and he, you know, he has a whole family and everything like that. To me, that is the power of the question what if, and I'm not just talking about Marvel, I'm talking in general. If I were to be in Hogwarts and somebody would say, Andrew, if you look to your left, you will see that mirror. I am covering my eyes and running as fast as I can in the other direction because I don't want to see my deepest desires unfold because I'm not going to be able to look away. So the idea of a what if question for me, the best way they can tell a story like that is to tell it in as emotional and sad a way as possible. And I think that the closest we've come was last week was Dr. Strange was the whole thing with Christine because it was all about, you know, what, what if Christine came with me to this party and now everything's going wrong and it turns into this thing and it becomes about saving her. Uh, it becomes about him, you know, missing out on a piece of his life and trying to get it back. So I would like to see the show venture into territory like that. What if Uncle Ben lived? You know, uh, what what does that do for me as Peter? Um, what if uh, I or, or if I was like Iron Man, for example, um, what if they uh, I, I lost all my money? You know, I came back from Afghanistan, but I lost all my money. What do I do like that? Like little little things that would, I think, really create because for that for more or less the mcu story is a happy one right you know some some good guys die because it's you know tension dramatic tension needs to be a thing but more or less we have been being told uh a, a pretty upbeat story so 
I would like What If to take the time to delve in the other direction and really show us, you know, what if War Machine didn't survive that fall in Civil War? Are Cap and Tony going to be friends again? Probably not. What's that world like? Uh, and if if Jim Rhodes is not around anymore, does he, you know, um, does he inspire the Falcon when they have that conversation? You know, mm-hmm. all the lives he saved after his war machine, what happens to those lives? That's the what if I want to see. The the one that really hits you in the heart. The it's a wonderful life what if question, if you will. And I don't think, aside from last week's Sorcerer Supreme stuff, I don't think the show's given that to us yet. Uh, so far, it's been very lighthearted. Even the dark episode where all the Avengers died, that was even kind of played kind of for laughs because everything was so sudden. Yeah. Uh, so, so I really want it to, I want it to gut me is what I think I want. Yeah, I, I hear you. I think they, I think that they're pushing the wrong, maybe the the, the di- moments we we didn't really know. The pre- uh yeah, they're kind of pushing weird moments, I think is the weird thing is like they're pushing these weird moments that expand into an episode that it's like, OK, it's a fun concept, but I don't know if it's enough to merit the experience we're really looking for here. Uh, and personally, for me, I think that the big thing I'm looking forward to right now is or what I would have done with a what if episode, a what if like platform is Marvel team up. Like, mm-hmm. give me crazy team ups and like have the watcher tell me a story about this team up and why it's so interesting. You know what I mean? Like, it's like it's it's an experience where um, it's an experience where like, you know, Spider-Man teams up with Human Torch. Cool. What does that look like? What is mm-hmm. like that kind of stuff is is interesting to me because I want to see worlds collide in a, in a fun way, um, you know, because moments in you know avengers endgame like big moments for me was you had these teams come together in various like these various worlds colliding and best example is when guardians ran into thor like that was amazing and it was funny and it was it was just like a wow moment because not only do we go to familiar places with the guardians and thor but we go to new places and it's them together dealing with new circumstances and to me, I think that's what I would want from like a what if platform. And and yeah, like like Marvel team ups, like just go crazy. Like mm-hmm. and we're getting it, we're kind of getting it in the 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 movie side of it. Like we're getting Doctor Strange now with Spider-Man in No Way mm-hmm. Home, which is really cool. And then Wanda and Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. But give me give me team ups, like give me fun team ups that we may not see in the MCU, but but deserve a shot in in on the platform in some way, shape, or form. One of the many things that I love about like Phase Three and beyond is how well they've been handling the idea of the team ups. Like mm-hmm. Thor Ragnarok became a team up movie with the Hulk. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's been this beautiful little just they're, they're synchronizing everything so well in those so they they've got the team up handled and i think that it's worked so well i feel like they won't take that and turn it into an animated disney plus show because it is pretty much now it's the foundation of the movies uh, and that's a great point yeah it's it's a great point for sure i you know it yeah we're kind of seeing it now anyway and we're 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 getting we're getting to that point but i don't know maybe short stories on other uh, the team ups that we may not be able to see in the mcu like you know maybe moon knight and spider-man like we may not we may never get that um you know Mm. right like you know what i mean like stuff like that um i think would be really cool and on top of that like like i said in the previous episode of what if like give me give me like what if 2099 yeah, give me stuff I I know I won't see. Like, give me stuff I know I won't see in the MCU. And yeah. I agree with you. Like, what if Uncle Ben lived? That would have been a really cool what if story. You know, um, yeah. the ones that make you think, like the ones that put stuff into perspective. And it may not even necessarily be like a tragedy, but it is something that would completely turn your worldview inside out. Like you, for example, Ryan. You have an awesome brother, Nick. I've met him. We all love Nick. Nick needs to be on the show one day. Imagine a yep. imagine somebody shows you a Watu comes down and shows you a what if version of your life where you were an only child, right? It may not necessarily, you know, it's 
probably not going to be a tragic life. Like you're a wonderful human being. I, I know you will always have a wonderful life no matter what, but just look at that guy's life, that other Ryan who has, he has no idea what he's missing. That's the crazy thing. He has no idea that he's missing out on a Nick. Right. And then it even Mm -hmm. brings up the question, is he missing out or is that just how his world is? And it's totally normal. Like there's, you, you could waste your life away just sitting there studied. That's why that Harry Potter thing scares the hell out of me. Um, and that would just snowball in your brain, I think, right? Like what would go through your head seeing something like that? Yeah, no, absolutely. But that's, and I think that's where our kind of our two outlooks on what if is coming together really is, it's like, for me, it's like the, the sad joke that constantly keeps playing out and it's like, and they're playing it out in this big, big level. And, and you're right. It's like you, you desire, you want, you desire this thing, but when you're watching it, it's kind of like, it's, you, you kind of don't want to watch it because you, you know, kind of want to see more and, and more. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a weird, it, it's a, it's a weird show, but I think, again, I do think it's, it has its purpose and it's, and it's serving said purpose. Um, but the other, I think the other thing is with these, with the, what if is it's a Disney plus show and the Disney plus shows right now have been like way up here. Like, you know, mm-hmm. WandaVision just blew us out of the water. Like, you know, and it's funny too, because I, I almost want to look back on our episodes with WandaVision, like the first four episodes again, because it was like, it wasn't until the fourth episode that it was just like, what are we watching? Like, this is something totally different. And the same goes for, um, you know, the same goes for like Falcon and Winter Soldier. Like it was just an incredible thrill ride. And then it added so much content to the MCU that you can now pick apart. Like we did a whole, we did a whole thing with Anna where like, we were looking at like Kingpin and like Norman yeah. Osborn. Like we were, we were all over the board. And then like, and then Loki, Loki was the peak of the whole thing. Loki was like gate, like game changer ending. And it was like, that was like everything I wanted in a Disney plus show. Like, in fact, all three of them combined is exactly what I was expecting from Disney plus hundred percent. And, yeah. and what if, it's and again what if is is on that that it's in that group but i i still don't feel like it hasn't done the thing that the other episodes have done to kind of make me just go wow like oh my god and i mean viewers correct me if i'm wrong what am i missing what am i missing from this show that i should be excited about but i'm not i'm 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 happy to watch it but i'm not like I'm, I'm kind of like trying to get to the next episode because I want to see, I want to know, just, I want to know what's going on. And the, the other shows, they hit that point And then they, not only do they get me there, they, they're like, you got to keep coming. Like, it's going to be good. This show's just like, Hey, come check this out. We got a whole different thing here. And it's like, okay. And then after it happens that I'm the one going, okay, what's next? Instead yes. of it going, Oh, you need to keep coming. Like, it's going to be, something's big's coming it's like it's just me going okay what does that mean yeah and i mean granted it, you know we still have how many left this this is the fifth one there's supposed to be 10 of them i keep forgetting I think 10, yeah we're at the halfway okay. point i think all right so we're at the halfway point um maybe they stuck you know the less substantial ones in the front mm-hmm. and saved the back half for something bigger uh so i'm always willing to give anything the benefit of the doubt when it's not finished uh so i'll i'll let it play its course and i i think that we will definitely get more to to chew on uh and and i think what would help is something to make us grateful for what is Mm -hmm. right uh you know going back to the it's a wonderful life reference because George Bailey sees a version of life where he does not marry his, you know, he doesn't marry Mary. As soon as he gets back to the real world, first thing he does, he like he runs to Mary and he gives her the biggest hug and kiss. Cause he's like, Oh my God, like I, you will not believe the world I just saw. So if they can do something that will make us grateful for the real world to the point where like, we want to put in our DVD copy of, 
you know, Captain America one again, because we're so grateful that that's how life turned out. Then they will have reached a point where I think that they've used the what if question the, the way that I want anyway. I shouldn't say use it correctly because it really is no correct way, but just that they use it the way that I think is, uh, is strong uh, from a storytelling standpoint. Uh, but for now, we make do with zombies. zombies. Well, you know, on that note, I do want to provide a little bit of backstory on the zombie verse. Okay. okay. So I took, I got some, I got some, uh, got some notes from a book here. Ooh, research. And, yeah, research, man. This is where the good stuff comes from. So the, so what happens is there is a superhero that was caught in a time loop. His name is Century. He's kind of like Marvel's equivalent of Superman, um, and he has, he's a very powerful superhero. I kind of find him a pretty boring character, uh, but. <laughs> But he's he's fun in the comics uh, because he always seems to drive narrative. Um, so he he gets stuck in a time loop, but he ends up arriving in his own future. But he comes with a plague, and that plague turns people into zombies. Right, mm-hmm. classic. Um, so the superhero the the plague ends up infecting superheroes, and because of that, there's superhuman element. Um, that drives the hunger to like a whole level. And then uh, basically, you know, zombies go crazy. But because certain patterns of events happen, Silver Surfer ends up arriving. And he's like, okay, this planet's dying. So, you know, let's call in Galactus. But the zombies are so powerful because they keep eating superhumans, they end up consuming and killing Galactus. Ooh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then these zombies get imbued with cosmic power and they end up jumping to different, uh, different worlds. So they or- originally came from earth two, one, four, nine, and then they jumped to earth six, sorry, they jumped, uh, one, six, one, zero. Uh, and yeah, they, they start eventually slowly trying to get to the, the prime universe, but, uh, as the more worlds they conquer, a counter army takes them on and it goes that way. Um, so, yeah, they, they kind of create like a, a multidimensional force that, that goes to stop the zombies. And that's been the story of Marvel Zombieverse. And was the zombie comic oh, like a, a one shot, like little miniseries or is it still going on? Uh, I think it was kind of a one shot, but it's 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 a pretty long one shot. Wow. Yeah, I never read it, never really had any inkling to read it, but it's nice to know. Because it's zombies. <laughs> yeah, it's zombies. It's nice to know the backstory, though. And I do like that they, you know, it did give me a little bit of tension in this episode uh, that they made the, the bold choice of the zombie still has the power of whoever they used to be in life. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, I wasn't sure how that worked, but I was just like, whatever, suspension of disbelief. Uh, so it created a lot of moments where it was scary. You know, you see Captain America zombie and you're like, oh, he could do a lot of damage. Somebody stop him. Uh, and for me, the moment that I think was my favorite moment, just because it got like a reaction out of me was, okay, Wasp gets scratched. We know she's not going to do well. And she's just kind of waiting to turn. Um, and she's she's wearing her superhero outfit. And the whole time I just kept thinking, she needs to take that off because the second she changes, she's going to be able to shrink and do stuff. And like once she's shrunken and a zombie, then all bets are off. She's like, she could be the most powerful zombie and just kill everybody really quickly. So I, like she's sitting there and she's in her wasp uniform and Spider-Man's talking to her and uh, Okoye is talking to her and everybody's just talking. And I'm like, somebody tell her to get into her normal clothes and take that suit off because she's going to be a zombie soon. What are they doing? Uh, and they, they did the thing where she grows giant. So it was cool to see the giant man version of Wasp. I do like that. I don't know if that's ever a thing yeah. in the comics, but I want to see more of that in the movies too. Yeah, she actually, um, she, uh, how do I describe it? She gets exposed to uh, the pin particles and she was, a, she's able to summon pure potter in the comics of uh, Janet Van Dyne, which is the mother of hope. She's able to summon the particles by will. So she doesn't need the, the serum to do it. 
um, because of her exposure to it. And then she was never able to grow big until like emotionally driven to a state where then she thus grows big and she ends up delivering a massive blow. You actually have seen an example of that in one of the best Marvel cartoons of all time. That's right. Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so yeah, she has done it in the comics and stuff. Uh, but it was nice to see it done in the, the cartoon, or sorry, in uh, What If, in the MCU world, uh, which was really cool. But yeah, no, the, I, we had, you know, it's funny. I, I'm sure listeners are nodding along with us here in terms of... Oh, they better be. In, Constantly. Isabella, Isabella and I had the same reaction. It was kind of like, how are the zombies able to use their powers? But I, my mind logic was that you know, they're, they're zombies get to a state of their like most basic functions, right? Like they, they know that they need sustenance in order to maintain themselves. Actually pointing out from the research I did on zombie verse, um, their world was, was like essentially consumed by zombies to a point where they didn't have anything to feed on. So they just kind of became just like still, they just stopped moving. Oh. which they did in the, the MCU version, which when they got to Vision, they just stopped, um, which was interesting. Uh, but yeah, so my brain logic was is like, okay, so they're at their most basic form of like purpose, but at the same time, they do have their power. So basically it's like, okay, I, I, I know I need to get to Y, like from I, I value X, need to get to value Y. And it's like, okay, so it's just like in, intuition. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's driven by intuition. Like, I'm going to reach forward. Oh, laser beam. Right. Like, Doctor Strange with the sling ring thing. Like, I need to get to this point. It just kind of happens as second nature because that's what heroes do, right? The heroes train to a point where everything's second nature. Yeah, that makes total sense to me. Like, it, was, it wasn't... It uh... was they didn't shatter any illusions or anything like that. I was just like, yeah, okay, cool. Fine. They, they have the powers. If any, like it added flavor to it. Uh, Cause if but, it was just yeah. going to be Captain America and he's just like, I'm just, then I'm just like, well, <laughs> yeah. what, what's different here. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. But, but Isabel and I had the same reaction is like, okay, that's bad. And now she's like carrying them and we're like, okay, she could turn any minute and just, um, you know, like just end yeah. it right there. What if that happened? <laughs> exactly i'm yeah, glad i, I wasn't just, the only one who was paranoid like just, take off the costume give it yeah. to like oh, give it to a koye or somebody who has no powers so that they can be of more help and like just get her in normal clothes because that will be bad if she turns in that thing so i'm glad yeah. i wasn't you know the only one yelling that at my television <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we we had that same reaction we were even saying like just downsize like just downsize because at least that point who knows what the zombie would do but yeah there was there was that moment of tension i mean the show that that's where the kind of brilliant moments of the show come out is like they they find these 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 moment they find in the what if moments um these flashes of genius uh, i'll describe them as because it's like we have these circumstances now what is something that you wouldn't expect and it's like, okay, you know, Wasp, for, for most of the show, she seems like she's, like, head of the game. And in the end, her confidence ends up, like, turning her into a zombie. So there are these brilliant moments of tension that the show creates and has you has that moment of you being like, okay, this is cool. Oh, what's going on here? And then you start, like, getting into it, and then you reset. Yeah, I like that. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I think I will say as, like, I guess the last – big positive thing I, I, I want to throw and shower on this episode is, you know, due to Disney plus due to the shows we've gotten, we have spent a hell of a lot more time than we did before with people like Loki and, and uh, Sam, the Falcon and Bucky Barnes and all that. But I think the biggest emotional journey that at least I feel I've gone on in Disney plus is WandaVision uh, just in terms of how emotionally it got to me. So when vision showed up here, it's the first time we've seen him since WandaVision ended. 
And it, it felt utterly new to see, like my reaction to seeing Vision was completely different than it's been any other time I've seen Vision because of what we went through together in that story. So I, I think that his popping up and the way it made me feel just reinforces how great a story WandaVision was and how deeply that affected the fans. And just like, you know, thinking about what Wanda went through, what he went through, and that whole uh, concept of that fake world mm-hmm. that she built for herself. Again, that what if that she built for herself. What if I had my husband and we had a normal life and we weren't Avengers and we tried to raise a family? She looked into that Harry Potter mirror and she liked what she saw so much. She kept that spell going to the point where it was hurting people in the outside world. Uh, Again, dangerous mirror. Do not get that mirror away from me, please, wizards. Uh, So seeing vision was uh, like, it, it, it just made my heart beat a little bit faster. And I'm like, oh man, vision he's he's gone now and and that we had such great times together back in january and february uh so i want to give the show and in turn wandavision show sort of credit for that for giving me a new perspective on characters just from seeing them pop up Mm -hmm. no for sure um i mean you bring I, i love that analogy with the mirror it's it's really, it's kind of really making me kind of just marinate with it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, the emotional journey of Wanda and like, just like what Wanda has done for fans, it it really, you know, she was a, she was a side character in Age of Ultron and then Civil War, she was a story driver, like she was a principal character. And then WandaVision is like, I think WandaVision really cemented her presence as like, you know, you know, like when you think of like these MCU movies now, or like even just MCU now, she really stands out as her own character. And, you know, just like, just like, you know, what the MCU does is it, it brings to life these characters, but when it's your character that you really love, then you, you get so attached. And when they have that moment, like they do, like, like Scar- Scarlet Witch had in WandaVision, this moment of like actualization, it's just such a fan moment. You know what I mean? I can't yes. describe it other than that. Like, like for me, for me, I, I loved Captain America going into the MCU before like Captain America got, got his fame. Um, and once MCU happened and as his story progressed, like, and now the torch has been passed, it's for me, I had that fan moment and, it, and and it's that, it's that thing I love. And I think that's what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? That's always what I'm looking for. What's the next character that's going to do that for me. And it might be Moon Knight. It might be She-Hulk. I don't know, but I mm, just want it. Oh, I hope it's She-Hulk. She's the best. Tatiana, man. I love her acting so much. So good. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, well, any final thoughts, Ryan, about what if zombies before we uh, call it a day? Uh, no, nothing really comes to mind. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I know we kind of started on a down note and worked our way up. But, um, I mean, I'm happy what if this exists. exists. I, I am going to see this through to the end because it's a Marvel experience that I'm still enjoying. I'm still wanting to see more. Uh, but... Uh, that being said, uh, tell like, where's this going? Where is this going? And how is it going to affect whatever? Um, give what, give me a what to more, a what to talking, have like a whole, what if episode just on a what to like, you know, like his journey as a watch, like, a, like we're seeing him seeing things, but it still has nothing to really do about him. So give me more Watu, you know? He what, seemed what, if the last, what, what if the final what if question he asks is, what if I did interfere? Oh, that would be so good. <laughs> that is, that, that would be perfect. That would be the, the moment of, 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 that would be the, the moment I'm looking for in this show. Because we all know what happens when he does interfere. I, I remember mentioning it in a, past podcast but he interferes and it ends up creating galactus 
So, yes. um, uh, so yeah, what happens if he interferes? Oh my God. I think you just, I, that's the Marvel moment we've been, you know, we have on these podcasts. I think you just cracked the uh, cracked it. Oh, and who knows if, if that's truly where we end up going with it, maybe we see him do that. Uh, m- maybe, you know, this series ends with him saying, you know what? It's time for me to get my hands dirty. And we see him interfere in Eternals. Maybe that's what's going to happen. I am 100% for that. I think, <laughs> you just, I think you just renewed my energy for this show. And I'm now 100% yes. wanting to see uh, where this goes. But I, I think that's where it should go. 100%. And mm-hmm. I, it's hard to say. Because, like, again, with these shows, um, with the MCU in general, I know... I can't imagine the the mental strain of of the MCU is now at such a point where you actually have to be careful how you're building the world now because the world exists and the world is its own thing, you know, like its own universe to a point where like because it exists, you now need to be careful how characters interact, you know what I mean? Because you want you want the narrative to go somewhere in a certain way. So you can't have a character just you can't have a character pull a what if and just like drive the narrative somewhere else. Cause we, as the fans have made such a momentum, you know, it's going to be curious to see where this momentum is going. Right. Especially cause we're in yeah. a whole new saga. This is, this is the big thing. Like we're in a whole yeah. new saga. And so like, where is the saga going? What's going to happen? I don't know, but I can't imagine the level of pressure that Kevin and, and his creative team are feeling in the sense of like, like it's the universe has come to such a point now where it, you know it's not about building it anymore it's about it's about it reacting to what they're doing which is a whole mm. mind blowing moment as a writer and as a fan right so um like i've seen a lot of interviews with kevin feige and and you know a lot of people are asking him the same old questions where's the young avengers when are you going to announce this what is this about <laughs> you know what does this mean and he keeps dodging him. And I think, honestly, I think he, he honestly, he has to keep being careful because the universe, everyone's invested so much into this universe. The mystery is carrying us through, but you do have to be careful about what you do and how you do it. Um, and he, he even says that. And I, I can't remember what interview it was. Oh, it was the Collider interview. Collider interview, he mentions, um, he mentions like, you know, we have to be careful about how creative we want to be. And, and yeah. in, I think I and it's it's a beautiful thing to get to get to where Kevin Feige is today and a well-deserved place he's in um, where he he has everyone's emotional investment and he's still able to constantly continue to create. And it's such a a responsibility that he has. And it's it's going to be interesting. Yes. And I I agree with his choice of word that they have to be careful because this world that they've made as beautiful as it is, there's so many moving pieces. It's it's a Jenga tower, man. And if you try to add something too early or try to take out something too late, it's really in danger of just crumbling. And then you think like, oh, well, that was disappointing. So I say that they can take all the time in the world that they want. And uh, I look forward to just, even if we never get Young Avengers, whatever, because I'm sure whatever they have planned is still good, no matter what. So I'll be happy with anything. I'll be Super happy with more Kingpin, but that's literally it. That's all I'm begging for. Other than that, I trust Kevin Feige 100%. Uh, so, Mr. Ryan, where can people find you to tell you how wrong you are about zombies, man? They can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Xbox Canada. You can find me on Instagram at Ryan J. Whitehead. And you can find me at Twitter at Crusader Online. And I'll be on that Twitter and that Instagram at Andrew Fantasia, as well as on the Andrew Fantasia YouTube channel. And if anybody out there is a James Bond fan, I have a treat for you. I am doing a retrospective starting on September 14th, where I will be going over every single James Bond movie, one movie per day, counting down to Bond 25, No Time to Die, which right now, Delta Variant Willing, is coming out October 8th. So 
if you if you want to get more details than you ever thought you needed about every single James Bond movie, the Andrew Fantasia channel is going to be the place to be. I get a little bit nuts. You didn't think you wanted to know about what Bond orders for breakfast when he goes to Istanbul, Turkey, but by God, I am telling you exactly what he ordered for breakfast when he went to Istanbul, Turkey, whether you like it or not. I love it. Can't wait. It's it's so good. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope to see you guys there, and we'll see you here next week on Infinity Rewatch. Until then, have a great week. Stay safe, and please have a marvelous brains. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.